The Book of Acts, Maasai, Chapter 1. The first account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Yahshua began both to do and to teach, until the day when he was taken up, after giving instructions through the set apart spirit to the emissaries whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them for forty days, speaking concerning the reign of Elohim, and meeting with them, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard from me, because Yochanan truly immersed in water, but you shall be immersed in the set-apart spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Master, would you at this time restore the rain to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority, but you shall receive power when the set-apart spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Yehuda and Shamaron into the end of the earth. And having said this, while they were looking on, he was taken up and a cloud hid him from their sight. And as they were gazing into the heavens, as he went up, see two men stood by them dressed in white, who also said, Men of Galil, why do you stand looking up into the heaven? This same Yeshua who was taken up from you into the heaven shall come in the same way as you saw him go into the heaven. Then they went back to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. And when they came in, they went up into the upper room where they were staying, both Kepha and Jacob and Yochanan and Andri, Philip and Toma, Bartholomew and Matthiahu, Jacob, the son of Alphi, and Shimon the Zealot, and Yehuda, the sons of Jacob. All these were continuing with one mind in prayer and supplication, with the women and Miriam, the mother of Yahshua, and with his brothers. And in those days Kepha, standing up in the midst of the top ones, and there was a gathering of about a hundred and twenty, said, Men and brothers, this scripture had to be filled which the set-apart spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Yehuda, who became a guide to those who seized Yahshua, because he was numbered with us, and did receive his share in this service. This one therefore purchased a field with the wages of unrighteousness, and falling forward he burst open in the middle, and all his intestines gushed out. And it became known to all those dwelling in Jerusalem, so that in their own language that field was called Hakal Dema, that is, field of blood. For it has been written in the book of Tehillim, Let his dwelling lie waste, and let no one live in it. Let another take his office. It is therefore necessary that of the men who have been with us, all the time that the Master Yahshua went in and out among us, beginning from the immersion of Yochanan to that day when he was taken up from us, that one of these should become a witness with us of his resurrection. And they put forward two, Yosef, called Barshaba, who is also called Justus, and Matiyahu. And praying, they said, You, Yahuwah, who know the hearts of all, show which one of these two you have chosen to receive the share in this service and office of the emissary from which Yahuda by transgression fell to go to his own place. And they cast their lots, and the lot fell on Matiyahu, and he was numbered with the eleven emissaries. Chapter 2 And when the day of the festival of Shavuot had come, they were all with one mind in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from the heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and settled on each one of them. And they were all filled with the set-apart spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them to speak. Now in Jerusalem they were dwelling Yahudim, dedicated men from every nation under the heaven. And when the sound came to be, the crowd came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to each other, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how do we hear each one in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and those dwelling in Armam Naharaim, both Yahuda and Cappadocia, 
Pontus in Asia, both Phrygia and Pamphylia, Mitzrayim and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Yahudim and converts, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues, the great deeds of Elohim. And they were all amazed and were puzzled, saying to each other, What does this mean? And others mocking said, They have been filled with sweet wine. But Kepha, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to them, Men of Yehuda, and all those dwelling in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen closely to my words. For these men are not drunk as you imagine, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Yoel. And it shall be in the last days, says Elohim, that I shall pour out of my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And also on my male servants and on my female servants, I shall pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I shall show wonders in the heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. And sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and splendid day of Yahuwah. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. Men of Yisrael, hear these words. Yahshua of Nazareth, a man from Elohim, having been pointed out to you by mighty works and wonders and signs which Elohim did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know, this one, given up by the set purpose and foreknowledge of Elohim, you have impaled and put to death through the hands of lawless men. Him, Elohim raised up, having loosened the pangs of death, because it was impossible that he could be held in its grips. For David said concerning him, I saw Yahuwah before me continually, because he is at my right hand, in order that I should not be shaken. For this reason my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad, and now my flesh shall also rest in expectation, because you shall not leave my being in Sheol, nor shall you give your lovingly committed one to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You shall fill me with joy in your presence. Men and brothers, let me speak boldly to you of the ancestor David, that he died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being a prophet, then and knowing that Elohim had sworn with an oath to him of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, to raise up the Messiah to sit on his throne. Foreseeing this, he spoke concerning the resurrection of the Messiah, that his being was neither left in Sheol, nor did his flesh see corruption. Elohim has raised up this Yahshua, of which we are all witnesses. Therefore, having been exalted to the right hand of Elohim, and having received from the Father the promise of the set-apart spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself said, Yahuwah said to my master, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all the house of Israel know for certain that Elohim has made this Yahshua, whom you impale, both master and Messiah. And having heard this, they were pierced to the heart, and said to Kepha and the rest of the emissaries, Men, brothers, what shall we do? And Kepha said to them, Repent, and let each one of you be immersed in the name of Yahshua Messiah for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the set-apart spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children, and to all who are far off, as many as Yahuwah our Elohim shall call. And with many other words he earnestly witnessed and urged them, saying, Be saved from this crooked generation. Then those indeed who gladly received his word were immersed, and on that day about three thousand beings were added to them. And they were continuing steadfastly in the teaching of the emissaries, and in the fellowship, and in the breaking of bread, and in prayers. And fear came upon every being, and many wonders and signs were being done through the emissaries. And all those who believed were together, and had all in common, and sold their possessions and property, and divided them among all, as anyone might have need. And day by day, continuing with one mind in the set-apart place, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, 
praising Elohim, and having favor with all the people. And the Master added to the assembly those who were being saved day by day. Chapter 3 And Kepha and Yochanan were going up to the set apart place at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his birth, was carried, whom they lay daily at the gate of the set apart place, which is called Yaffa, to ask alms from those entering into the set apart place. Who, seeing Kepha and Yochanan about to go into the set apart place, asked for alms. And Kepha with Yochanan, looking steadfastly at him, said, Look at us. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive whatever from them. But Kepha said, I do not have silver and gold, but what I do possess, this I give you. In the name of Yeshua Messiah of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And taking him by the right hand, he lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones were made firm. And leaping up, he stood and walked and went in with them into the set-apart place, walking and leaping and praising Elohim. And all the people saw him walking and praising Elohim. And they recognized him, that it was he who sat begging alms at the lovely gate of the set-apart place. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what befell him. And as the lame man who was healed was clinging to Kepha and Yochanan, all the people ran together to them in the porch which is called Shelemaz, greatly amazed. And seeing it, Kiva responded to the people, Men of Yisrael, why do you marvel at this? Or why do you look so intently at us? As though by our own power or reverence we made him walk. The Elohim of Abraham and Yitzhak and of Yaakov, the Elohim of our fathers, esteemed his servant Yahshua, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the set-apart and righteous one and asked that a man, a murderer, be granted you. But you killed the Prince of Life, whom Elohim raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And by belief in his name, this one whom you see and know, his name made strong, and the belief which comes through him has given him this perfect healing before all of you. And now, brothers, I know that you did it in ignorance, as your rulers did too. But this is how Elohim has filled what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Messiah was to suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn back for the blotting out of your sins in order that times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Master, and that He sends Yahshua Messiah pre-appointed for you, whom heaven needs to receive until the time of restoration of all matters, of which Elohim spoke through the mouth of all His set-apart prophets since of old. For Moshe truly said to the fathers, Yahuwah, your Elohim, shall raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers, him you shall hear according to all matters, whatever he says to you. And it shall be that every being who does not hear that prophet shall be utterly destroyed from among the people. And likewise, all the prophets who have spoken from Shemuel and those following have also announced these days. You are sons of the prophets and of the covenant which Elohim made with our fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your seed... All the nations of the earth shall be blessed. To you first, Elohim, having raised up his servant Yahshua, sent him to bless you in turning away each one of you from your wicked ways. Chapter 4 And as they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the set-apart place and the Sadducees came upon them, being annoyed because they taught the people and announced the resurrection from the dead in Yahshua, and they arrested them and put them in jail until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of the men became about five thousand. And it came to be on the next day that the rulers and elders and scribes assembled in Jerusalem, as well as Hanan the high priest, and Caiaphas and Yochanan and Alexander, and as many as were of high priestly descent. And having placed them in the middle, they asked, By what power or in what name did you do this? Then Kepha, filled with the set-apart spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if today we are called to account for a good deed towards a sick man by whom he has been healed, let it be known to all of you 
and to all the people of Israel that in the name of Yahshua Messiah of Nazareth, whom you impaled, whom Elohim raised from the dead, by him this one stands before you healthy. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. And there is no deliverance in anyone else, for there is no other name under the heaven given among men by which we need to be saved. And seeing the boldness of Kepha and Yochanan, and perceiving that they were unlearned and ordinary men, they marveled, and they recognized that they had been with Yahshua. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could not contradict it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they consulted with one another, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, that an outstanding miracle has been done through them is apparent to all those dwelling in Jerusalem, and we are unable to deny it. But in order that it spreads no further among the people, let us strongly threaten them to speak no more to anyone in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name of Yahshua. But Kepha and Yochanan answering them said, Whether it is right in the sight of Elohim to listen to you more than to Elohim, you judge. For it is impossible for us not to speak of what we saw and heard. And having threatened them further, they released them, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, because they were all praising Elohim for what had been done. For the man was over forty years old on whom this miracle of healing had been done. And having been released, they went to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders said to them. And having heard that, they lifted up their voice to Elohim with one mind and said, Yahuwah, you are Elohim who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. Who by the mouth of your servant David have said, Why did the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The sovereigns of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against Yahuwah and against his Messiah. For truly in this city they were gathered together against your set-apart servant, Yahshua, whom you anointed, both Herodes and Pontius Pilate with the nations and the people of Israel, to do whatever your hand and your purpose decided before to be done. And now, Yahuwah, look on their threats." And give to your servants all boldness to speak your word, by stretching out your hand for healing and signs and wonders to take place through the name of your set-apart servant, Yahshua. And when they had prayed, the place where they came together was shaken, and they were all filled with the set-apart spirit, and they spoke the word of Elohim with boldness. And the group of those who believed were of one heart and one being, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had all in common, and with great power the emissaries gave witness to the resurrection of the master Yeshua, and great favor was upon them all, and there was not anyone needy among them, for all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them, and brought the prices of what was sold, and laid them at the feet of the emissaries, and they distributed to each as anyone had need. And Yosef, who was also called Barnabah by the emissaries, which means son of encouragement, a Levite, a native of Cyprus, having land, sold it, and brought the money, and laid it at the feet of the emissaries. Chapter 5 But a certain man named Hananiah, with Shephira, his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back from the price, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the feet of the emissaries. But Kepha said, Hananiah? Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the set-apart spirit and keep back from the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, did it not remain your own? And after it sold, was it not in your authority? Why have you conceived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to Elohim. Then Hananiah, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. And great fear came upon all those who heard of this. But the young men arose and wrapped him up, carried him out and buried him. And it came to be about three hours later that his wife came in, not knowing what had taken place. And Giva responded to her, Say to me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yes, for so much. So Kepha said to her, Why have you agreed to try the spirit of Yahuwah? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they shall carry you out. 
and immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead, and carrying her out, they buried her beside her husband. And great fear came upon all the assembly, and upon all who heard of this. And through the hands of the emissaries, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one mind in Shelema's porch. But of the rest, no one had the courage to join them. However, the people made much of them, and more believers were added to the master, large numbers of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Kepha passing by might fall on some of them. A large number also gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick ones and those who were troubled by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. But the high priest rose up and all those with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with jealousy and seized the emissaries and put them in the public jail. But a messenger of Yahuwah opened the prison doors at night and brought them out and said, Go and stand in the set-apart place and speak to the people all the words of this life. Now when they heard, they went into the set-apart place early in the morning and were teaching. But the high priest and those with him came and called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel, and sent to the prison for them to be brought. But having come, the officer did not find them in prison, and they went back and reported it, saying, We found the prison shut in all safety, and the watches standing outside before the doors. But having opened them, we found no one inside. And as the high priest and the captain of the set-apart place and the chief priest heard these words, they were puzzled and wondered what this might be. But one came and reported to them, saying, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the set-apart place and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them, not with force, for they feared the people, lest they should be stoned. And having brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and intend to bring the blood of this man upon us. And Kepha and the other emissaries answering said, We have to obey Elohim rather than men. The Elohim of our fathers raised up Yahshua, whom you laid hands on, hanging him on a timber. Him, a prince and a savior, Elohim has exalted to his right hand to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these matters. And so also is this set-apart spirit whom Elohim has given to those who obey him. And those hearing were cut to the heart and took counsel to kill them. But a certain one in the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the Torah, respected by all the people, and ordered them to put the emissaries outside for a little while, and said to them, Men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do to these men. For before these days, Toda rose up, claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about four hundred, did join him. He was slain, and all who obeyed him were dispersed and came to naught. After him, Yahuda of Galil rose up in the days of the census, and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were scattered. And now I say to you, stay away from these men, and leave them alone. Because if this plan or this work is of men... It shall be overthrown. But if it is of Elohim, you are unable to overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against Elohim. And they heeded his advice, and having called for the emissaries, beating them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Yahshua, and let them go. Then indeed they went rejoicing from the presence of the council, because they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily, in the set-apart place and in every house, they did not cease teaching and bringing the good news, Yahshua the Messiah. Chapter 6 And in those days, when the Tawans were increasing, there arose a grumbling against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were overlooked in the daily serving. So the twelve summoned the group of the Tawans and said, It is not pleasing for us to leave the word of Elohim and serve tables, Therefore, brothers, seek out from among you seven men who are known to be filled with the set-apart spirit and wisdom, whom we shall appoint for this duty. But we shall give ourselves continually to prayer 
and to serving the word. And the word pleased the entire group, and they chose Stephanos, a man filled with belief and the set-apart spirit, and Philip and Prochorus and Nicanor, Timon and Paramenas and Nicolaus, a convert from Antioch, whom they set before the emissaries. And when they had prayed, they laid hands on them, and the word of Elohim spread, and the number of the taught ones increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the belief. And Stephanos, filled with belief and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. But some of those of the so-called congregation of the freedmen, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and those from Kilikia and Asia, rose up, disputing with Stephanos. But they were unable to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Then they instigated men to say, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moshe and Elohim. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes, so they came upon him, seized him, and brought him to the council. And they set up false witnesses who said, This man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against this set-apart place and the Torah. For we have heard him saying that this Yahshua of Nazareth shall overthrow this place and change the institutes which Moshe delivered unto us. And all who sat in the council, looking steadily at him, saw his face was like the face of a heavenly messenger. Chapter 7 And the high priest said, Is this so? And he replied, Men, brothers and fathers, listen. The Elohim of esteem appeared to our father Avraham when he was in Aram Naharaim, before he dwelt in Haran, and said to him, Come out of your land and from your relatives, and come here into a land that I will show you. Then he came out of the land of the Kastim and dwelt in Haran. And from there, after the death of his father, he removed him to this land in which you now dwell. And he gave him no inheritance in it, not a foot of it, but he promised to give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. And Elohim spoke in this way that his seed would be sojourning in a foreign land, and that they would be enslaved and mistreated four hundred years. And the nation to whom they shall be enslaved, I shall judge, said Elohim. And after that they shall come out and serve me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so he brought forth Yitzhak and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Yitzhak brought forth Yaakov, and Yaakov brought forth the twelve ancestors. And the ancestors, becoming jealous, sold Yosef into Mitzrayim. But Elohim was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom before Pharaoh, sovereign of Mitzrayim, and he appointed him governor over Mitzrayim and all his house. Then a scarcity of food and great distress came over all the land of Mitzrayim and Canaan, and our fathers found no food. But Yaakov heard that there was grain in Mitzrayim, and he sent out our fathers the first time. And at the second time, Yosef was made known to his brothers, and Yosef's race became known to Pharaoh. And Yosef sent and called his father Yaakov, and all his relatives to him, seventy-five people. And Jacob went down to Mitzrayim and died, he and our fathers. And they were brought over to Shechem and laid in the tomb that Abraham bought for a price of silver from the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem. But as the time of the promise drew near which Elohim had sworn to Abraham, the people increased and multiplied in Mitzrayim, until another sovereign arose who did not know Yosef, having dealt treacherously with our race, This one mistreated our fathers, making them expose their babies so that they should not live. At that time Moshe was born, and he was well-pleasing to Elohim, and he was reared three months in the house of his father. But when he was exposed, the daughter of Pharaoh took him up and reared him as her own son. And Moshe was instructed in all the wisdom of the Mitzrites, and was mighty in words and works. And when he was forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brothers, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them being wronged, he defended and revenged him who was oppressed, smiting the Mitzrite. And he thought that his brothers would have understood that Elohim would give deliverance to them by his hand. But they did not understand. And the next day he appeared to two of them as they were fighting and urged them to peace, saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you wrong one another? But he who was wronging his neighbor pushed him away, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you wish to kill me as you killed the Mitzrite yesterday? 
And at this saying, Moshe fled and became a sojourner in the land of Midian, where he fathered two sons. And after forty years were completed, a messenger of Yahuwah appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. And Moshe, seeing it, marveled at the sight, and coming near to look, the voice of Yahuwah came to him, saying, I am the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, and the Elohim of Yitzhak, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moshe trembled and did not have the courage to look. But Yahuwah said to him, Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is set apart ground. I have certainly seen the evil treatment of my people who are in Mitzrayim, and I have heard their groaning and have come down to deliver them. And now, come, let me send you to Mitzrayim. This Moshe, whom they had refused, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? This one Elohim sent to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the messenger who appeared to him in the bush. This one led them out, after he had done wonders and signs in the land of Mitzrayim, and in the Red Sea, and in the wilderness forty years. This is the Moshe who said to the children of Israel, Yahuwah your Elohim shall raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. Him you shall hear. This is he who was in the assembly in the wilderness, with the messenger who spoke to him on Mount Sinai, and with our fathers, who received the living words to give to us, unto whom our fathers would not become obedient, but thrust away. And in their hearts they turned back to Mitzrayim, saying to Aharon, Make us mighty ones to go before us, for this Moshe who led us out of the land of Mitzrayim, we do not know what has become of him. And they made a calf in those days and brought an offering to the idol, and were rejoicing in the works of their own hands. So Elohim turned, so Elohim turned, and gave them up to worship the host of the heaven, as it has been written in the book of the prophets. Did you bring slaughtered beasts and offerings unto me during forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? And you took up the tent of Moloch, and the star of your mighty one, Kion, images which you made to bow before them. Therefore I shall remove you beyond Babel. The tent of witness was with our fathers in the wilderness, as he appointed, instructing Moshe to make it according to the pattern that he had seen, which our fathers, having received it in turn, also brought with Yahshua into the land possessed by the nations, whom Elohim drove out before the face of our fathers until the days of David, who found favor before Elohim and asked to find a dwelling for the Elohim of Jacob. But Shelema built him a house. However, the Most High does not dwell in dwellings made with hands, as the prophet says, The heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. What house shall you build for me, says Yahuwah? Or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all of these? You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the set-apart spirit as your fathers did. You also do. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who before announced the coming of the righteous one, of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers, who received the Torah as it was ordained by messengers, but did not watch over it. And hearing this, they were cut to the hearts and gnashed the teeth at him. But he, being filled with the set-apart spirit, looked steadily into the heaven and saw the esteem of Elohim and Yahshua standing at the right hand of Elohim. And he said, Look! I see the heavens open and the son of Adam standing at the right hand of Elohim. And crying out with a loud voice, they stopped their ears and rushed upon him with one mind and threw him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Shaul. And they were stoning Stephanos as he was calling and saying, Master, Yahshua, receive my spirit. And kneeling down, he cried out with a loud voice, Master, do not hold this sin against them. And having said this, he fell asleep. Chapter 8 And Shaul was giving approval to his death. And on that day there was a great persecution against the assembly which was at Jerusalem, And they were all scattered throughout the countries of Yehuda and Shamaron, except the emissaries, and dedicated men buried Stephanos and made great lamentation over him. But Shaul was ravaging the assembly, entering every house and dragging off men and women, putting them in prison. Then those who had been scattered went everywhere, 
bringing the good news of the word. And going down to the city of Shamaron, Philip proclaimed Messiah to them. And the crowds with one mind heeded what Philip said, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits came out of many who were possessed, crying with a loud voice, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. And there came to be great joy in that city. Now there was a certain man called Shimon, who formerly was practicing magic in the city and astonishing the people of Shamron, claiming to be someone great, to whom they all were giving heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This one is the power of Elohim, which is great. And they were giving heed to him. For a long time he had amazed them with his magic. And when they believed Philip as he brought the good news about the reign of Elohim and the name of Yeshua Messiah, both men and women were immersed. And Shimon himself also believed. And when he was immersed, he continued with Philip and was amazed, seeing the miracles and signs which took place. And when the emissaries who were at Jerusalem heard that Shamaron had received the word of Elohim, they sent Kepha and Yochanan to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them to receive the set-apart spirit, for he had not yet fallen on any of them, but they had only been immersed in the name of the master Yahshua. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the set-apart spirit. And Shimon, seeing that through the laying on of the hands of the emissaries, the set-apart spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me this authority too, so that anyone I lay hands on shall receive the set-apart spirit. But Kepha said to him, Let your silver perish with you, because you thought to buy the gift of Elohim through money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter, for your heart is not right before Elohim. Repent, therefore, of this evil of yours, and plead with Elohim to forgive you the intention of your heart. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness and bound by unrighteousness. But Shimon answering said, Plead with the master for me, so that none of what you said shall come upon me. Then after they had earnestly witnessed and spoken the word of Yahuwah, they returned to Jerusalem, bringing the good news in many villages of the Shamaronim. But a messenger of Yahuwah spoke to Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south along the way which goes down from Jerusalem to Aza. This is desert. And he arose and went and saw a man of Cush, a eunuch, of great authority under the Kondik, the sovereignness of the Cushites, who was in charge of all her treasury, and had come to Jerusalem to worship, and was returning. And sitting in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Yeshiyahu. And the spirit said to Philip, Go near, and join him in that chariot. And running up, Philip heard him reading the prophet Yeshiyahu, and said, Do you know what you are reading? And he said, How am I able, unless someone guides me? And he called Philip near to come up and sit with him. And the passage of the scripture which he was reading was this, He was led as a sheep to slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation he was deprived of right ruling, and who shall declare his generation, because his life was taken from the earth. And the eunuch answering Philip said, I ask you, about whom does this prophet say this? About himself or about some other? And Philip, opening his mouth and beginning at this scripture, brought to him the good news of Yahshua. And as they were going on the way, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, water, what hinders me from being immersed? And Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, it is permitted. And he answering said, I believe the Son of Elohim to be Yahshua the Messiah. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and he immersed him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of Yahuwah caught Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, for he went his way rejoicing. Philip, however, was found at Ashdod, and passing through he brought the good news in all the cities until he came to Caesarea. Chapter 9 but Shaul, still breathing threats and murder against the top ones of the master, having come to the high priest, asked from him letters to the congregation of Damasek, so that if he found any who were of the way, whether men or women, to bring them bound to Jerusalem. 
And it came to be that as he journeyed, he came near Damasek. And suddenly a light flashed around him from the heaven. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Shaul, Shaul, why do you persecute me? And he said, Who are you, master? And the master said, I am Yeshua, whom you persecute. It is hard for you to kick against the prods. Both trembling and being astonished, he said, Master, what do you wish me to do? And the master said to him, Arise, go into the city, and you shall be told what you have to do. And the men journeying with him stood speechless, hearing indeed the voice, but seeing no one. And Shaul rose from the ground, but when his eyes were opened, he saw no one. And leading him by the hand, they brought him into Damasek. And he was three days without sight, and did not eat nor drink. And there was at Damasek a certain taught one by the name Hananiah. And the master said unto him in a vision, Hananiah. And he said, Here I am, master. And the master said to him, Arise, and go to the street called Straight, and seek in the house of Yehuda for one called Shaul of Tarsus. For look, he is praying and has seen in a vision a man named Hananiah coming in and laying hands on him, so as to see again. And Hananiah answered, Master, I have heard from many about this man, how many evils he did to your set-apart ones in Jerusalem, and he has authority from the chief priest to bind all those calling on your name. But the master said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before nations, sovereigns, and the children of Israel. For I shall show him how much he has to suffer for my name. And Hananiah went away and went into the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Shaul, the master Yahshua, who appeared to you on the way as you came, has sent me, so that you might see again and be filled with the set-apart spirit. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it were scales, and he received his sight. And rising up, he was immersed. And having received food, he was strengthened. And Shaul was with the taught ones at Damasek some days. And immediately he proclaimed the Messiah in the congregations, that he is the son of Elohim. And all who heard were amazed and said, Is this not he who destroyed those calling on this name in Jerusalem, And has come here for this, to take them bound to the chief priests? But Shaul kept increasing in strength, and was confounding the Yahudim who dwelt in Damasek, proving that this is the Messiah. And after many days had elapsed, the Yahudim plotted to kill him. But their plot became known to Shaul, and they were watching the gates day and night to kill him. But taking him by night, the taut ones let him down through the wall, lowering him in a basket. And having arrived at Jerusalem, Shaul tried to join the taut ones, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a taught one. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the emissaries and told him how he had seen the master on the way and that he had spoken to him and how he was speaking boldly at Damasek in the name of Yeshua. And he was with them at Jerusalem, coming in and going out and speaking boldly in the name of the master Yeshua and disputed with the Hellenists, but they undertook to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him out to Tarsus. Then indeed the assemblies throughout all Yehuda and Galil and Shamaron had peace and were built up and walking in the fear of Yahuwah and in the encouragement of the set-apart spirit, they were being increased. And it came to be as Kepha was passing through all places that he also came down to the set-apart ones who were dwelling at Lod. And there he found a certain man named Ananias, who had been bedridden for eight years being paralytic. And Kepha said to him, Aeneas, Yahshua the Messiah heals you. Rise up and make your bed. And immediately he rose up. And all those dwelling at Lod and Sharon saw him and did turn to the master. And in Yafo there was a certain taught one named Tabitha, which means Dorcas. This woman was filled with good works and kind deeds which she did. And it came to be in those days that she became sick and died. And having washed her, they laid her in an upper room. And Lod, being near Yafo, and the tall ones having heard that Kepha was there, they sent two men to him, 
urging him not to delay in coming to them. And having risen up, Kepha went with them. And when he arrived, they brought him to the upper room. And all the widows stood beside him, weeping, showing the inner garments and outer garments which Dorcas had made while she was with them. But Kepha sent them all out and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and seeing Kepha, she sat up. And giving her his hand, he lifted her up. And calling the set-apart ones and widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Yafo, and many believed on the master. And it came to be that he stayed many days in Yafo with Shimon, a leather tanner. Chapter 10 Now there was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a captain of what was called the Italian Regiment, dedicated and fearing Elohim with all his household, doing many kind deeds to the people, and praying to Elohim always. He clearly saw in a vision about the ninth hour of the day a messenger of Elohim coming to him and saying, Cornelius? And looking intently at him and becoming afraid, he said, What is it, Master? And he said to him, Your prayers and your kind deeds have come up for a remembrance before Elohim. And now send men to Yafol, and send for Shimon, who is also called Kepha. He is staying with Shimon, a leather tanner whose house is by the sea. And when the messenger who spoke to him went away, Cornelius called two of his household servants and a dedicated soldier from among those who waited on him continually. And having explained to them all, he sent them to Yafol. And on the next day, as they were on their way in approaching the city, Kepha went up on the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became hungry and wished to eat. But while they were preparing, he fell into a trance. And he saw the heaven opened and a certain vessel like a great sheet bound at the four corners descending to him and let down to the earth, in which were all kinds of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping creatures and the birds of the heaven. And a voice came to him, Rise up, Kepha, slay and eat. But Kepha said, Not at all, master, because I've never eaten whatever is common or unclean. And a voice came to him again, second time. What Elohim has cleansed, you do not consider common. And this took place three times, and the vessel was taken back to the heaven. And while Kepha was doubting within himself about what the vision might mean, look, the men who had been sent from Cornelius, having asked for the house of Shimon, stood at the gate, and calling out, they inquired whether Shimon, also known as Kepha, was staying there. And as Kepha was thinking about the vision, the spirit said to him, See, three men seek you, but rise up, go down and go with them, not doubting at all, for I have sent them. So Kepha went down to the men who had been sent to him from Cornelius and said, Look, I am the one you seek, why have you come? And they said, Cornelius, the captain, a righteous man, and one who fears Elohim, and well spoken of by the entire nation of the Yahudim, was instructed by a set-apart messenger to send for you to his house, and to hear words from you. So, inviting them in, he housed them. And on the next day, Kepha went away with them, and some brothers from Yaffa went with him. And the following day, they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius was waiting for them, having called together his relatives and close friends. And it came to be that when Kepha entered, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and bowed before him. But Kepha raised him up, saying, Stand up, I myself am also a man. And talking with him, he went in and found many who had come together. And he said to them, You know that a Yahudi man is not allowed to associate with or go to one of another race. But Elohim has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. That is why I came without hesitation when I was sent for. So I ask, why have you sent for me? And Cornelius said, Four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and see, a man stood before me in shining garments, and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard, and your kind deeds were remembered before Elohim. Now send to Yafo, and call Shimon here, who is also called Kepha. He is staying in the house of Shimon, a leather tanner by the sea. When he comes, he shall speak to you. So I sent to you immediately, and you have done well to come. 
And now we are all present before Elohim to hear all that you have been commanded by Elohim. And opening his mouth, Kepha said, Truly, I see that Elohim shows no partiality, but in every nation, he who fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. He sent the word to the children of Israel, bringing the good news, Peace through Yeshua Messiah. He is master of all. You know what word came to be throughout all Yehuda, beginning from Galil after the immersion which Yochanan proclaimed. How Elohim did anoint Yahshua of Nazareth with the set-apart spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For Elohim was with him. And we are witnesses of all he did, both in the country of the Yahudim and in Jerusalem, whom they even killed by hanging on a timber. Elohim raised up this one on the third day and let him be seen, not to all the people, but to witnesses, those having been chosen before by Elohim, to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to proclaim to the people and to witness that it is he who was appointed by Elohim to be judge of the living and the dead. To this one, all the prophets bear witness that through his name, everyone believing in him does receive forgiveness of sins. While Kepha was still speaking these words, the set-apart spirit fell upon all those hearing the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, as many as came with Kepha, because the gift of the set-apart spirit had been poured out on the nations also. For they were hearing them speaking with tongues and extolling Elohim. Then Kepha answered, is anyone able to forbid water, that these should not be immersed who have received the set-apart spirit, even as also we? And he commanded them to be immersed in the name of Yeshua Messiah. Then they asked him to remain a few days. Chapter 11 And the emissaries and brothers who were in Yehuda heard that the nations also received the word of Elohim. And when Kepha went up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision were contending with him, saying, you went into uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Kepha began and set it forth in order, saying, I was in the city of Yafo praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, a certain vessel descending like a great sheet, let down from the heaven by four corners, and it came to me. Having looked into it, I perceived, and I saw four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts and creeping creatures in the birds of heaven. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise up, Kepha. Slay and eat. But I said, Not at all, master, because whatever is common or unclean has never entered into my mouth. And the voice answered me again from the heaven, What Elohim has cleansed you do not consider common. And this took place three times, and all were drawn up again into the heaven. And see, immediately three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent to me from Caesarea. And the Spirit said to me to go with them, not doubting at all, and these six brothers also went with me, and we went into the man's house. And he told us how he had seen a messenger standing in his house, who said to him, Send men to Yafo and call for Shimon, who is also called Gifa, who shall speak to you words by which you shall be saved, you and all your house. And as I began to speak, the set-apart spirit fell upon them, as upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the master, how he said, Yochanan indeed immersed in water but you shall be immersed in the set-apart spirit. So if Elohim gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Master Yeshua Messiah, how was I able to withstand Elohim? And having heard this, they were silent and praised Elohim, saying, Then Elohim has indeed also given to the nations repentance to life. Then indeed they who were scattered because of the pressure that arose over Stephanos passed through to Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except the Yahudim only. But some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who, when they had come to Antioch, spoke to the Hellenists, bringing the good news, the Master Yeshua. And the hand of the Master was with them, and a great number, having believed, turned to the Master. And word of it came to the ears of the assembly in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch, who, having come and seeing the favor of Elohim, was glad, and encouraged them all with purpose of heart to cleave to the Master, 
because he was a good man and filled with the set-apart spirit and with belief. And large numbers were added to the master. Then Barnabas went to Tarsos to seek Shaul. And having found him, he brought him to Antioch. And it came to be that for an entire year they came together in the assembly and taught large numbers. And the taught ones were called Messianus, first in Antioch. And in those days prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. And one of them, named Hagab, stood up and indicated by the Spirit that there was going to be a great scarcity of food all over the world, which also took place under Claudius Caesar. So the taught ones, each according to his ability, decided to send relief to the brothers dwelling in Yehuda. This they also did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnaba and Shaul. Chapter 12 And about that time Herodes, the sovereign, put forth his hand to do evil to some from the assembly, and he killed Jacob, the brother of Yochanan, with the sword. And seeing that it was pleasing to the Yahudim, he proceeded further to arrest Kepha as well, and they were the days of unleavened bread. So when he had seized him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to watch over him, intending to bring him before the people after Pesach. So Kepha was indeed kept in prison, but prayer was earnestly made to Elohim on his behalf by the assembly. And when Herodes was about to bring him out, that night Kepha was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers, and the guards before the door were keeping the prison. And see, a messenger of Yahshua stood by, and a light shone in the building. And smiting the side of Kepha, he raised him up, saying, Get up quickly. And his chains fell off his hands. And the messenger said to him, Gird yourself, and bind on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, Put on your garment, and follow me. And coming out he followed him, and knew not that what was done by the messenger was true, but thought he was seeing a vision. And when they had passed the first and the second guard post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them by itself. And they went out, and went down one street, and the messenger instantly withdrew from him. And when Kepha had come to himself, he said, Now I truly know that Yahuwah has sent his messenger and delivered me from the hand of Herodes and from all the Yahudi people were anticipating. And having realized this, he went to the house of Miriam, the mother of Yochanan, who was also called Marcos, where many had gathered to pray. And when Kepha knocked at the door of the gate, a girl named Rodi came to answer. And when she recognized Kepha's voice, she did not open the gate because of her joy, but ran in and reported that Kepha stood before the gate. And they said to her, You are mad. But she kept insisting that it was so. And they said, It is his messenger. And Kepha continued knocking, and having opened, they saw him and were amazed. And motioning to them with his hands to be silent, he told them how the master brought him out of the prison. And he said, Report this to Jacob and to the brothers. And he left and went to another place. And when day came, there was no small stir among the soldiers about what had become of Kepha. And when Herodes had searched for him and did not find him, he examined the guards and ordered them to be led away. And he went down from Yehuda to Caesarea and stayed there. Now Herodes had been highly displeased with the people of Zor and Zidon. But with one mind they came to him, and having made Blastos, the sovereign's eunuch, their friend, they were asking for peace because their country was supplied with food by the sovereign's country. And on an appointed day, Herodes, having put on his royal clothes, sat on his throne and gave an address to them. And the people kept shouting, The voice of a mighty one and not of a man. And instantly a messenger of Yahuwah smote him because he did not give the esteem to Elohim. And becoming worm-eaten, he died. And the word of Elohim went on growing and spreading. And Barnabas and Shaul returned from Jerusalem, having completed the service and having taken with them Yochanan, who was also called Marcos. Chapter 13 And in the assembly that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, both Barnabas and Shimon, who was called Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene, and Manachem, who had been brought up with Herodes, the district ruler, and Shaul. And as they were doing service to the master and fasted, the set-apart spirit said, Separate unto me Barnabas 
and Shaul for the work to which I have called them. Then, having fasted and prayed, and having laid hands on them, they sent them away. So they, having been sent out by the set-apart spirit, went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. And having come into Salamis, they proclaimed the word of Elohim in the congregations of the Yahudim, and they also had Yochanan as an attendant. And having passed through all the islands to Paphos, they found a certain magician, a false prophet, a Yahudi whose name was Bar Yahshua, who was with the proconsul, Sergius Paulius, a man of understanding. This man, having called for Barnaba and Shaul, earnestly sought to hear the word of Elohim. But Elamas, the magician, for so his name is translated, withstood them, seeking to turn the proconsul away from the belief. Then Shaul, who also is Paul, filled with the set-apart spirit, looked intently at him and said, O oh, son of the devil, filled with all deceit and all recklessness, you enemy of all righteousness, shall you not cease perverting the straight ways of Yahuwah? And now, see the hand of Yahuwah is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And instantly, a dark mist fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. And having seen what took place, the proconsul believed, being astonished at the teaching of the master. And having put out from Paphos, Shaul and those with him came to Perge in Pamphylia, and Yochanan, having left them, returned to Yerushalayim. But passing through from Perge, they came to Antioch in Pisidia, and went into the congregation on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the Torah and the prophets, the rulers of the congregation sent to them, saying, Men, brothers, if you have any word of encouragement for the people, speak. And Shaul, standing up and motioning with his hand, said, Men, Yisraelis, and those fearing Elohim, listen. The Elohim of this people, Yisrael, did choose our fathers, and exalted the people in their sojourning in the land of Mitzrayim, and with a high arm he brought them out. Now for a time of about forty years he sustained them in the wilderness, and having destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave their land to them as an inheritance. And after that he gave judges for about four hundred and fifty years, until Shemuel the prophet. But then they asked for a sovereign, and Elohim gave them Shaul the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for forty years. And having removed him, he raised up for them David as sovereign, to whom he also gave witness, and said, I have found David the son of Yeshai, a man after my own heart, who shall do all my desires. From this one seed, according to the promise, Elohim raised up for Yisrael a savior, Yeshua. After Yochanan had first proclaimed the immersion of repentance to all the people of Yisrael before his coming, and as Yochanan was completing his mission, he said, Who do you suppose I am? I am not he. But see, there comes one after me, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to loose. Men, brothers, sons of the race of Abraham, and those among you fearing Elohim, to you the word of this deliverance has been sent, for those dwelling in Yerushalayim and their rulers, because they did not know him, nor even the voices of the prophets which are read every Sabbath, have filled them in having judged him. And having found not one cause for death, they asked Pilate that he should be put to death. And when they had accomplished all that was written concerning him, taking him down from the timber, they laid him in a tomb. But Elohim raised him from the dead, and he was seen for many days by those who came up with him from Galil to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses to the people. And we bring you the good news, the promise made to the fathers, that Elohim has filled this for us, their children, having raised up Yahshua, as it has been written in the second Tehillah, You are my son, today I have brought you forth. And that he raised him out of the dead, no more to return to corruption, he has said thus, I shall give you the trustworthy kindness of David. For this reason, he also says in another Tehillah, You shall not give your loving committed one to see corruption. For David, indeed, having served his own generation by the counsel of Elohim, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. But he whom Elohim raised up saw no corruption. Let it therefore be known to you, brothers, 
that through this one forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you, and by everyone who believes is declared right from all sins, from which you were not able to be declared right by the Torah of Moshe. Watch then, that what was said in the prophets does not come upon you. See you despisers, marvel and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which you would in no way believe if someone were to declare to you. And when the Yahudim went out of the congregation, the nations begged to have these words spoken to them the next Sabbath. And when the meeting of the congregation had broken up, many of the Yahudim and of the worshipping converts followed Shaul and Barnaba, who, speaking to them, were urging them to continue in the favor of Elohim. Then on the next Sabbath, almost all the city came together to hear the word of Elohim. But when the Yahudim saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. And contradicting and speaking evil, they opposed what Shaul was saying. But speaking boldly, Shaul and Barnabas said, It was necessary that the word of Elohim should be spoken to you first. But since you thrust it away and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, see, we turn to the nations. For so the Master has commanded us. I have set you to be a light to the nations, that you should be for deliverance to the ends of the earth. And when the nations heard this, they were glad and praised the word of Yahuwah. Then as many as had been appointed to everlasting life believed. And the word of Yahuwah was being spread throughout the entire country. But the Yahudim stirred up the worshipping and noble women and the chief men of the city and raised up persecution against Shaul and Barnaba and threw them out of their borders. And shaking off the dust from their feet against them, they came to Iconium. And the taught ones were filled with joy and the set apart spirit. Chapter 14 And it came to be an Iconian that they went together into the congregation of the Yahudim and spoke in such a way that a great number of both the Yahudim and Greeks believed. But the Yahudim, who would not obey, stirred up the nations and evilly influenced their beings against the brothers. So they remained a long time, speaking boldly in the Master who was bearing witness to the word of his favor, giving signs and wonders to be done by their hands. And the crowd of the city was divided, and some sided with the Yahudim and some with the emissaries. But when a move took place by both the nations and Yahudim, with their rulers to mistreat and stone them, they became aware of it, and fled to Lustra and Derbe, cities of Laconia, and the country around about. And they were bringing the good news there. And in Lustra, there was sitting a certain man, disabled in his feet, a cripple from his mother's womb, who had never walked. This one heard Shaul speaking, who, looking intently at him and seeing that he had believed to be healed, said with a loud voice, Stand upright on your feet. And he sprang up and began to walk. And when the crowd saw what Shaul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in Laconian, the mighty ones have become like men and come down to us. And they called Barnaba Zeus and Shaul Hermes, since he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, being in front of their city, brought oxen and wreaths to the gates and wished to offer with the crowds. And when the emissaries Barnaba and Shaul heard this, they tore their garments and ran in among the crowd, crying out and saying, Men, why are you doing this? We are also men with the same nature as you, bringing to you the good news to turn from these worthless matters to the living Elohim, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, who in past generations allowed the nations to walk in their own ways, though indeed he did not leave himself without witness, doing good, giving us rain from heaven and fruit-bearing seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. Even with these words, they still had difficulty in stopping the crowds from offering to them. But Yahudim arrived from Antioch and Iconians, and having won over the crowds, they stoned Shaul, dragged him out of the city, thinking he was dead. But while the taught ones gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city, and on the next day he went away with Barnabé to Derby, And having brought the good news to that city, and having made many taught ones, they returned to Lustra and Iconian and Antioch, strengthening the beings of the taught ones, encouraging them to continue in the belief. 
and that through many pressures we have to enter into the reign of Elohim. And having appointed elders in every assembly, having prayed with fasting, they committed them to the Master in whom they had believed. And having passed through Pisidia, they came to Pamphylia. And having spoken the word in Perge, they went down to Atelia. And from there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been committed to the favor of Elohim for the work which they had completed. And having arrived and having gathered together the assembly, they related all that Elohim had done with them, and that he had opened the door of belief to the nations. And they remained there a long time with the taught ones. Chapter 15 And certain men came down from Yehuda and were teaching the brothers, Unless you are circumcised according to the practice of Moshe, you are unable to be saved. So when Shaul and Barnabah had no small dissension and dispute with them, they arranged for Shaul and Barnabah and certain others of them to go up to Jerusalem, to the emissaries and elders, about this question. So being sent on their way by the assembly, they passed through Phoenicia and Shamaron, relating the conversion of the nations. And they were causing great joy to all the brothers. And having arrived in Jerusalem, they were received by the assembly and the emissaries and the elders, and they reported all that Elohim had done with them. And some of the believers, who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees, rose up, saying, It is necessary to circumcise them, and to command them to keep the Torah of Moshe. And the emissaries and elders came together to look into this matter. And when there had been much dispute, Kepha rose up and said to them, Men! Brothers, you know that a good while ago Elohim chose among us that by my mouth the nation should hear the word of the good news and believe. And Elohim, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the set-apart spirit as also to us and made no distinction between us and them, cleansing their hearts by belief. Now then, why do you try Elohim by putting a yoke on the neck of the taught ones, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But through the favor of the Master, Yahshua Messiah, we trust to be saved in the same way as they. And all the crowd was silent, and were listening to Barnaba and Shaul declaring how many miracles and wonders Elohim did among the nations through them. And after they were silent, Jacob answering said, Men, brothers, listen to me. Shimon has declared how Elohim first visited the nations to take out of them a people for his name. And the words of the prophets agree with this, as it's been written. After this, I shall return and rebuild the booth of David, which has fallen down. And I shall rebuild its ruins, and I shall set it up, so that the remnant of mankind shall seek Yahuwah, even all the nations on whom my name has been called, says Yahuwah, who is doing all this, who has made this known from of old. Therefore I judge that we should not trouble those from among the nations who are turning to Elohim, but that we write to them to abstain from the defilements of idols and from whoring and from what is strangled and from blood. For from ancient generations Moshe has in every city those proclaiming him, being read in the congregations every Sabbath. Then it seemed good to the emissaries and elders with all the assembly to send chosen men from among them to Antioch with Shaul and Barnabah, Yehuda being called Barsaba and Silas leading men among the brothers. Having written by their hand this, the emissaries and the elders and the brothers, to the brothers who are of the nations in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia, greetings. Since we have heard that some who went out from us have troubled you with words, unsettling your lives to whom we gave no command, it seemed good to us, having become of one mind, to send chosen men to you with our beloved Barnaba and Shaul, men who have given up their lives for the name of our master, Yahshua Messiah. We have therefore sent Yahuda and Silas, who are also confirming this by word of mouth. For it seemed good to the set-apart spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessities, that you abstain from what is offered to idols and blood and what is strangled and whoring. If you keep yourselves from these, you shall do well. Be strong." They, therefore, being sent off, went to Antioch, and having gathered the crowd together, they delivered the letter, and having read it, they rejoiced over its encouragement. And Yehuda and Silas, being themselves also prophets, 
encouraged the brothers with many words and strengthened them. And having spent some time, they were sent back in peace from the brothers to the emissaries. But it seemed good to Silas to remain. And Shaul and Barnabas continued in Antioch, teaching and bringing with many others also the good news, the word of Yahuwah. And after some days, Shaul said to Barnabas, Let us now go back and visit our brothers in every city where we proclaim the word of Yahuwah and see how they are. And Barnabas purposed to take with them Yochanan, called Marcos. But Shaul thought it not fit to take with them the one who withdrew from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. A sharp feeling therefore came to be, so that they parted from one another. And so Barnabas took Marcos and sailed to Cyprus. And Shaul chose Silas and went off, being committed by the brothers to the favor of Elohim. And he went through Surya and Kalikia, strengthening the assemblies. Chapter 16 And he came to Derbe and Lustra, and see a certain taught one there was named Timotheos, the son of a certain Yahudi woman who believed, but his father was Greek, who was well spoken of by the brothers who were at Lustra and Iconian. Shaul wished to have this one go with him, and he took him and circumcised him, because of the Yahudim who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was Greek. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the regulations to keep, which were decided by the emissaries and elders at Jerusalem. Then indeed the assemblies were strengthened in the belief, and increased in number every day. And having passed through Pyrigia and the Galatian country, they were forbidden by the set-apart spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they came to Musia, they tried to go into Bethunia, but the Spirit did not allow them. And having passed by Musia, they came down to Traus. And in the night a vision appeared to Shaul. A man of Macedonia was standing, begging him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when he saw the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Master had called us to bring the good news to them. Therefore, sailing from Traus, we ran a straight course to Semthrake, and the next day came to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the principal city of that part of Macedonia, a colony. And we were staying in that city for some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went outside the city by a river, where there used to be prayer. And having sat down, we were speaking to the woman who we met there. And a certain woman named Ludia, a seller of purple from the city of Thracia, worshipping Elohim, was hearing whose heart the master did open to pay attention to what Shaul said. And when she was immersed, and her household, she begged us, saying, If you have judged me to be believing in the master, come to my house and stay. And she urged us. And it came to be as we went to prayer, that a certain slave girl possessed with the spirit of Puthan did meet us, who brought her master's much profit by foretelling. Having followed Shaul and us, she cried out, saying, these men are the servants of the Most High Elohim, who proclaim to us the way of deliverance. And she was doing this for many days. But Shaul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Yeshua Messiah to come out of her. And it came out that same hour. But when her masters saw that their anticipation of money-making was gone, they seized Shaul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the rulers. And having brought them to the captains, they said, These men, being Yahudim, greatly disturb our city, and they proclaim practices which are not right for us to receive, nor to do, being Romans. And the crowd rose up together against them, and the captains tore off their garments and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And having laid many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a command, put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. And at midnight, Shaul and Silas were praying and singing songs to Elohim, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly a great earthquake took place so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and all the chains came loose. And the jailer, awakening from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, thinking the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Shaul called with a loud voice, saying, 
Do no harm to yourself, for we are all here. And asking for a light, he ran in and fell down trembling before Shaul and Silas. And having led them outside, he said, Masters, what do I have to do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Master Yahshua Messiah, and you shall be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of Yahuwah to him and to all who were in his house. And taking them in that hour of the night, he washed their wounds, and immediately he was immersed, he and all that were his. And having brought them into his house, he set food before them. And he rejoiced with all his household, having believed in Elohim. And when day came, the authorities sent the officers, saying, Let these men go. And the jailer reported these words to Shaul, saying, The captains have sent to let you go. Now then, come out and go in peace. But Shaul said to them, They have beaten us publicly, uncondemned, being Romans. They have thrown us into prison, and now do they throw us out secretly? No, indeed, let them come themselves and bring us out. And the officers reported these words to the authorities, and they were afraid when they heard that they were Romans. And having come, they pleaded with them and brought them out and asked them to leave the city. So coming out of the prison, they went to Ludia, and seeing the brothers, they encouraged them and went forth. Chapter 17 And having passed through Amphilios and Apollyana, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a congregation of the Yahudim. And according to his practice, Shaul went in unto them, and for three Sabbaths was reasoning with them from the Scriptures, explaining and pointing out that the Messiah had to suffer and rise again from the dead, and saying, This is the Messiah, Yahshua, whom I proclaim to you. And some of them did believe, and a large number of the worshipping Greeks, and not a few of the leading women joined Shaul and Silas. But the Yahudim, who did not believe, having become envious, took some of the wicked men from the marketplace, and gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar, and came upon the house of Jason, and were seeking to bring them out to the people. But not finding them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers to the city rulers, crying out, They have turned the world upside down, and have come here too, whom Jason has received, and all of them are acting contrary to the dogmas of Caesar saying, There is another sovereign, Yahshua. And they troubled the crowd and the city rulers when they heard this. And when they had received a pledge from Jason and the rest, they let them go. And the brothers immediately sent Shaul and Silas away by night to Baroria, who, having come, went into the congregation of the Yahudim. Now these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, who received the word with great eagerness and searched the scriptures daily if these words were so. Then many of them truly believed, and also not a few of the Greeks, decent women as well as men. And when the Yahudim from Thessalonica came to know that the word of Elohim was proclaimed by Shaul at Beroria, they came there also and stirred up the crowds. And then immediately the brothers sent Shaul away to go to the sea. But both Silas and Timotheus stayed there. And those who arranged for Shaul brought him to Athens. And having received a command for Silas and Timotheus to join him as soon as possible, they departed. But while Shaul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred up within him when he saw that the city was utterly idolatrous. Therefore, indeed, he was reasoning in the congregation with the Yahudim and with the worshippers and in the marketplace daily with those who met there. And some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him, and some were saying, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, He seems to be a proclaimer of strange mighty ones. Because to them, because to them he brought the good news, Yahshua and the resurrection. So they laid hold of him and brought him to Areopagus, saying, Are we able to know what this fresh teaching is of which you speak? For you are bringing some strange matters to our ears. We wish then to know what these mean. For all the Athenians and the strangers living there spent their leisure time in doing naught but to speak or to hear what is fresh. And having stood in the midst of Aeropagius, Shaul said, Men of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every matter. For passing through and observing the objects of your worship, I even found a slaughter place with this inscription, To the unknown mighty one. Not knowing then whom you worship, I make him known to you, Yahuwah. 
who made the world and all that is in it, this one being master of heaven and earth, does not dwell in dwellings made with hands, nor is he served with men's hands as if needing any, himself giving to all life and breath and all else. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, having ordained beforehand the times and the boundaries of their dwelling, to seek the master, if at least they would reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and are, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Now then, since we are the offspring of Elohim, we should not think that the Elohim is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by the skill and thought of man. Truly then, having overlooked these times of ignorance, Elohim now commands all men everywhere to repent, because he has set a day on which he is going to judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, having given proof of all this by raising him from the dead. And hearing of the resurrection of the dead, some indeed mocked, while others said, We shall hear you again concerning this. And so Shaul went out from among them. But some men joined him and believed, among them Dionysius, the Aeropagite, and a woman named Demarius, and others with them. Chapter 18 And after this Shaul left Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a certain Yahudi named Aculus, born in Pontos, who had recently come from Italia with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Yahudim to leave Rome. And he came to them. And because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and was working, for they were tent makers by trade. And he was reasoning in the congregation every Sabbath and won over both Yahudim and Greeks. And when Silas and Timotheos came down from Macedonia, Shaul was pressed by the Spirit and earnestly witnessed to the Yahudim that Yahshua is the Messiah. However, when they resisted and blasphemed, he shook his garments and said to them, your blood is on your head. I am clean. From now on I shall go to the nations. And having left there, he came to the house of a certain man named Justus, who worshipped Elohim, whose house was next to the congregation. And Crispus, the ruler of the congregation, did believe in the master with all his household. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were immersed. And the master spoke to Shaul in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid. But speak and do not be silent, because I am with you and no one shall attack you to do you evil, because I have much people in this city. And he remained a year and six months teaching the word of Yahuwah among them. And when Galion was proconsul of Acacia, the Yahudim with one mind rose up against Shaul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This one does seduce men to worship Elohim contrary to the Torah. And as Shaul was about to open his mouth, Galleon said to the Yahudim, If it were a matter of wrongdoing or wicked recklessness, O Yahudim, there would be reason why I should bear with you. But if it is a question of words and names and a law which is among you, see to it yourselves, for I do not wish to be a judge of these matters. And he drove them away from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sothenes, the ruler of the congregation, and beat him before the judgment seat, but Galleon showed no concern whatever. And Shaul, having stayed several days more, having taken leave of the brothers, was sailing for Surya. And Priscilla and Achilles were with him, having shaved his hair at Capnehore, for he had taken a vow. And he came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself went into the congregation and reasoned with the Yahudim. And when they asked him to stay a longer time with them, he declined, but took leave of them, saying, I have to keep this coming festival in Jerusalem by all means, but I shall come back to you, Elohim desiring so. And he sailed from Ephesus, and having come to Caesarea, going up and greeting the assembly, he went down to Antioch. And having spent some time there, he went forth, passing through the country of Galatia and on through Pergia, strengthening all the top ones. And a certain Yahudim named Apollos, born at Alexandria, a learned man and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. This one had been instructed in the way of the master, and being fervent in spirit, he was speaking and teaching the matters about the master exactly, 
though he knew only the immersion of Yochanan. And he began to speak boldly in the congregation. And when Achilles and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of Elohim more exactly. And when he intended to pass through to Acacia, the brothers, having encouraged him, wrote to the taught ones to receive him, who, having arrived, greatly helped those who believed through favor. For with power he refuted the Yahudim publicly, showing from the scriptures that Yeshua is the Messiah. Chapter 19 And it came to be while Apollos was at Corinth that Shaul, having passed through the upper parts, came to Ephesus, and having found some taught ones, he said to them, Did you receive the set-apart spirit when you believed? And they said to him, No, we have not even heard that there is a set-apart spirit. And he said to them, Into what then were you immersed? And they said, Into Yochanan's immersion. And Shaul said, Yochanan indeed immersed with an immersion of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe in the one who is coming after him, that is, in Messiah Yeshua. And when they heard this, they were immersed into the name of the Master Yeshua. And when Shaul had laid hands on them, the set-apart spirit came upon them, and they were speaking in tongues and prophesying. And all the men were about twelve. And having gone into the congregation, he spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the reign of Elohim. But when some were hardened and did not believe, speaking evil of the way before the crowd, he withdrew from them and separated the taught ones, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannos. And this took place for two years, so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Master Yeshua, both Yahudim and Greeks. And Elohim worked unusual miracles through the hands of Shaul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the wicked spirits went out of them. But certain roving Yahudi, exorcists, took it upon themselves to call the name of the Master Yeshua over those who had wicked spirits, saying, We exorcise you by Yeshua, whom Shaul proclaims. And there were seven sons of a certain Sceva, a Yahudi chief priest, who were doing this. And the wicked spirit answering said, Yeshua I know, and Shaul I know, but who are you? And the men in whom the wicked spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them, and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this became known to all, both the Yahudim and Greeks dwelling in Ephesus. And fear fell on them all, and the name of the Master Yahshua was made great. And many who had believed came confessing and declaring their deeds. And many of those who practiced magic brought their books together, burning them before all. And they reckoned up the value of them and found it to be fifty thousand pieces of silver. So the word of the Master was growing mightily and prevailing. Now when these matters had been completed, Shaul purposed in the spirit, when he had passed through Macedonia and Acacia, to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I have to see Rome too. And having sent into Macedonia two of those assisting him, Demetrios and Erastos, he himself remained in Asia for a time. And about that time there came to be a great commotion about the way. For a certain man named Demetrios, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Artemis, provided no little business to the craftsmen, who, having called them together with the workers of similar trade, said, Men, you know that our wealth is from this business, and you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Shaul has persuaded and turned away a large number, saying that they are not mighty ones which are made with hands. And not only is this trade of ours in danger of coming to rejection, but also that the temple of the great female mighty one Artemis, whom all Asia and the world worship, shall be regarded as worthless, and her greatness diminished. And having heard this, they were filled with rage and cried out, saying, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! And the entire city was filled with confusion, and they rushed with one mind into the theater, having seized Gaios and Aristarchus, Macedonians, Shaul's fellow travelers. And Shaul, intending to go in among the mob, the taught ones did not allow him. And some of the officials of Asia, being his friends, sent to him, begging him not to risk himself into the theater. Then others indeed shouted this, and others that, for the assembly was confused, 
and most of them did not know why they had come together. And some of the crowd instructed Alexander, the Yahudim putting him forward. And Alexander motioned with his hand and wished to make his defense to the people. But having recognized that he was a Yahudim, all with one voice cried out for about two hours, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians! And the city clerk, having calmed the crowd, said, Men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is the guardian of the temple of the great female mighty one Artemis, and of that which fell down from Zeus? Therefore, if these matters are undeniable, you need to be calm and do not act rashly, for you have brought these men here who are neither temple robbers nor speaking evil of your female mighty one. If truly then Demetrios and his fellow craftsmen have a case against anyone, the courts are open and there are proconsuls. Let them accuse one another. And if you have any further complaint, it shall be settled in the regular assembly. For we are in danger of being accused of riot concerning today, there being no reason which we could give to account for this disorderly gathering. And having said this, he dismissed the assembly. Chapter 20 After the uproar had ceased, Shaul called the top ones to him, and having embraced them, went away to Macedonia. And having gone through those parts, and having encouraged them with many words, he came to Greece, where he spent three months. When he was about to sail to Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia, as a plot was made against him by the Yahudim. And he was accompanied by Sapater of Baroria, and Aristarchus, and Secundos of the Thessalonians, and Gaius of Derbe, and Timotheus, and Tuchikos, and Trophimos of Asia. And these going ahead waited for us at Traus. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and came to them at Traus in five days, where we stayed seven days. And on day one of the week, the taught ones having gathered together to break bread, Shaul, intending to depart the next day, was reasoning with them and was extending the word till midnight. And there were many lamps in the upper room where they were assembled. And a certain young man by name, Eutychus, was sitting in a window, being overpowered by a deep sleep. As Shaul kept on reasoning, he was overcome by sleep and fell down from the third story and was picked up dead. And Shaul, having gone down, fell on him and embracing him said, Do not be upset, for his life is in him. Then going up again and having broken bread and eaten, he talked a long while, even till daybreak, and so went forth. And they brought the young man in alive, and were encouraged not a little. And we, going ahead to the ship, sailed to Assos, intending to take Shaul on board there, for so he had arranged, intending himself to go on foot. And when he met us at Assos, we took him on board and came to Mytilene. And from there we sailed, and the next day came opposite Chios. And the next day we arrived at Samos, and remained at Tragulian. And the following day we came to Miletos, for Shaul had decided to sail past Ephesus so that he might lose no time in Asia, for he was hurrying to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the day of the festival of Shavuot. And for Miletos he sent to Ephesus, and called for the elders of the assembly. And when they had come to him, he said to them, You know, from the first day that I came to Asia, how I was with you all the time, serving the master with all humility, with many tears and trials which befell me by the plotting of the Yahudim, as I kept back no matter that was profitable, but proclaimed it to you, and taught you publicly and from house to house, witnessing to Yahudim and also to Greeks, repentance towards Elohim and belief in our master Yahshua Messiah. And now, see, I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem, not knowing what is going to meet me there, except that the set-apart spirit witnesses in every city, saying that chains and pressures await me, but I do not count my life of any value to me, so that I might accomplish my mission with joy and the service which I receive from the Master Yahshua to bear witness to the good news of the favor of Elohim. And now, see, I know that you all are among whom I went about proclaiming the reign of Elohim, shall see my face no more. Therefore I witness to you this day that I am clear from the blood of all, for I kept not back from declaring to you all the counsel of Elohim. Therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock, among which the set-apart spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the assembly of Elohim, which he has purchased with his own blood. 
For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves shall come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves men shall arise, speaking distorted teachings to draw away the taught ones after themselves. Therefore watch, remembering that for three years, night and day, I did not cease to warn each one with tears. And now, brothers, I commit you to Elohim and to the word of his favor which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those having been set apart. I have coveted no one's silver or gold or garments, and you yourselves know that these hands supplied my needs and for those who were with me. All this I did show you by laboring like this, that you ought to help the weak. And remember the words of the Master Yeshua that he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And having said this, he knelt out and prayed with them all. And there was much weeping among them all, and falling on Shaul's neck they kissed him, distressed most of all because of the word which he had said, that they would see his face no more. And they went with him to the ship. Chapter 21 And it came to be when we had torn ourselves away from them, and had set sail, we ran a straight course and came to Kos, and the next day to Rhodes, and from there to Patara, And having found a ship passing over to Phoenicia, we went aboard and set sail. And having sighted Cyprus, and having passed it on the left, we sailed to Syria and landed at Zor, for the ship was to unload her cargo there. And having found taught ones, we remained there seven days. And they told Shaul through the Spirit not to go up to Jerusalem. And when it came to be that our days there were ended, we left and went on, all of them accompanying us with wives and children till we were out of the city. And kneeling down on the beach, we prayed. And having embraced one another, we boarded the ship, and they returned to their homes. And when we had completed our voyage from Zor, we came to Ptolemaeus. And having greeted the brothers, we stayed with them one day. And on the next day we left and came to Caesarea, and went into the house of Philip the evangelist, who was one of the seven and stayed with him. Now this one had four maiden daughters who prophesied, And as we were staying many days, a certain prophet named Hagab came down from Yehuda. And having come to us, he took the girdle of Shaul, bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus says the set-apart spirit, Thus shall the Yahudim at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this girdle, and deliver him into the hands of the nations. And when we heard this, both we and those from that place begged him not to go up to Jerusalem. And Shaul answered, What do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Master Yahshua. And as he could not be persuaded, we cease, saying, Let the desire of the Master be done. And after those days, having made ready, we went up to Jerusalem. And also some of the taught ones from Caesarea went with us and brought with them one, Mnason of Cyprus, an early taught one with whom we were to lodge. And when we had arrived at Jerusalem, the brothers received us gladly. And on the following day, Shaul went in with us to Jacob, and all the elders came. And having greeted them, he was relating one by one what Elohim had done among the nations through his service. And when they heard it, they praised the master, and they said to him, You see, brother, how many thousands of Yahudim there are who have believed and they are all ardent for the Torah. But they have been informed about you, that you teach all the Yahudim who are among the nations to forsake Moshe, saying not to circumcise the children, nor to walk according to the practices. What then is it? They shall certainly hear that you have come. So do this, what we say to you. We have four men who have taken a vow. Take them, and be cleansed with them, and pay their expenses so that they shave their heads. Take them and be cleansed with them, and pay their expenses so that they shave their heads. And all shall know that what they have been informed about you is not so, but that you yourself also walk orderly, keeping the Torah. But concerning the nations who believe, we have written and decided that they should keep themselves from what is offered to idols, and blood and what is strangled and whoring. Then Shaul took the men on the next day, and having been cleansed with them, went into the set-apart place to announce the completion of the days of separation, until the offering should be presented for each one of them. And when the seven days were almost ended, the Yahudim from Asia, seeing him in the set-apart place, 
were stirring up all the crowd, and they laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Yisrael, help! This is the man who is teaching all men everywhere against the people and the Torah and this place. And besides, he also brought Greeks into the set-apart place and has profaned this set-apart place. And the entire city was moved and the people rushed together, seized Shaul and dragged him out of the set-apart place. And immediately the doors were shut. And while they were seeking to kill him, a report came to the commander of the company of soldiers that all Jerusalem was in confusion. At once he took soldiers and captains and ran down to them. And they, having seen the commander and the soldiers, stopped beating Shaul. Then the commander came near and took him, and commanded him to be bound with two chains, and was asking who he was and what he had done. And in the crowd some were shouting this and others that, and not being able to ascertain the truth because of the uproar, he commanded him to be taken into the barracks. And when he came to the stairs, he had to be carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the crowd. For a large number of the people followed after, crying out, Away with him! And as Shaul was about to be led into the barracks, he said to the commander, Am I allowed to say somewhat to you? And he said, Do you know Greek? Are you not the Mitzrite who some time ago stirred up a revolt and led the four thousand assassins out into the wilderness? But Shaul replied, I am a Yahudi from Tarsos in Kalikia, a citizen of no mean city, and I beg you, allow me to speak to the people. And having given him permission, Shaul, standing on the stairs, motioned with his hand to the people. And when there was a great silence, he spoke in the Hebrew language, saying, Chapter 22 Men, brothers and fathers, hear my defense from you now. And when they heard that he spoke to them in the Hebrew language, they kept greater silence, and he said, I am indeed a Yahudi, having been born in Tarsos of Kalikia, but brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel having been instructed according to the exactness of the Torah of our fathers, being ardent for Elohim as you all are today, who persecuted this way to the death, binding and delivering up into prisons both men and women, as also the high priest bears me witness, and all the eldership from whom I also received letters to the brothers, and went to Damasek to bring in chains even those who were there to Jerusalem to be punished. And it came to be as I was journeying and coming near Damasek about noon, Suddenly, a great light shone around me out of the heaven, and I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Shaul, Shaul, why do you persecute me? And I answered, Who are you, master? And he said to me, I am Yahshua of Nazareth, whom you persecute. And those who were with me indeed saw the light and were afraid, but they did not hear his voice speaking to me. And I said, What shall I do, master? And the master said to me, Rise up, go into Damasek, and there you shall be told all that you have been appointed to do. And as I could not see because of the esteem of that light, being led by the hand of those who were with me, I came into Damasek, and a certain Hananiah, a dedicated man according to the Torah, being well spoken of by all the Yahudim dwelling there, came to me and stood by and said to me, Brother Shaul, look up. And at that same hour I looked up at him, and he said, the Elohim of our fathers has appointed you to know his desire and to see the righteous one and to hear the voice from his mouth because you shall be his witness to all men of what you have seen and heard. And now why do you delay? Rise up, be immersed and wash away your sins calling on the name of Yahuwah. And it came to be when I returned to Jerusalem, and while I was praying in the set apart place, I came to be in a trance and I saw him saying to me, Hurry and get out of Jerusalem." speedily, because they shall not accept your witness concerning me. And I said, Master, they know that in every congregation I was imprisoning and beating those who believe on you. And when the blood of your witness Stephanos was shed, I was also standing by, giving my approval to his death, and keeping the garments of those who were killing him. And he said to me, Go, because I shall send you far from here to the nations. And they were listening to him, until this word, and then they lifted up their voice, saying, Away with such a one from the earth, for it is not fit that he should live. As they were shouting and tearing their garments and throwing dust into the air, the commander ordered him to be brought into the barracks and said that he should be examined by flogging in order to find out why they were shouting so against him. And as they were stretching him out with straps, Shaul said to the captain who was standing by, 
Is it permitted for you to whip a man who is a Roman and uncondemned? And when the captain heard, he went and reported to the commander, saying, Watch what you are about to do, for this man is a Roman. And having come, the commander said to him, Say to me, Are you a Roman? And he said, Yes. And the commander answered, With a large sum I obtained this citizenship. And Shaul said, But I was even born so. Then at once those who were about to examine him withdrew from him. And the commander was also afraid after he found out that he was a Roman, and because he had bound him. And on the next day, intending to know for certain why he was accused by the Yahudim, he released him and commanded the chief priests and all their council to come, and brought Shaul down and set him before them. Chapter 23 And Shaul, looking intently at the council, said, Men, brothers, I have lived in all good conscience before Elohim until this day. And the high priest Hananiah commanded those who stood by him to strike him on the mouth. Then Shaul said to him, Elohim is going to strike you, whitewashed wall, and do you sit judging me according to the Torah? And do you command me to be struck contrary to the Torah? And those who stood by said, Do you revile the high priest of Elohim? And Shaul said, I did not know, brothers, that he was the high priest, for it has been written, You shall not speak evil of the ruler of your people. Now Shaul, perceiving that one part were Sadducees and the other Pharisees, cried out in the council, Men, brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of a Pharisee. I am being judged concerning the expectation and resurrection of the dead. And when he had said this, there came a dissension between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the crowd was divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, nor messenger, nor spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. And there was a great uproar, and certain of the scribes of the party of Pharisees were earnestly contending, saying, We find no evil in this man, and if a spirit or a messenger has spoken to him, let us not fight against Elohim. And a great dissension having come, the commander, fearing lest Shaul would be pulled to pieces by them, commanded the body of soldiers to go down and seize him from their midst and bring him into the barracks. And on the following night the master stood by him and said, Take courage, Shaul, for as you have witnessed for me in Jerusalem, so you have to bear witness at Rome too. And when it became day, some of the Yahudim made a conspiracy and bound themselves under an oath, saying that they would neither eat nor drink until they had killed Shaul. And those making this conspiracy were more than forty, who, having come to the chief priests and elders, said, We have bound ourselves under a great oath not to eat at all until we have killed Shaul. Now then, you, with the council, inform the commander to have him brought down to you tomorrow, as intending to examine more exactly all about him, and we are ready to kill him before he comes near. And when Shaul's sister's son heard of their ambush, he went and entered into the barracks and reported to Shaul. And Shaul, having called one of the captains to him, said, Take this young man to the commander, for he has somewhat to report to him. He indeed then took him and led him to the commander and said, The prisoner Shaul called me to him and asked me to bring this young man to you, having somewhat to say to you. And the commander, having taken him by the hand, went aside by themselves and asked, what is it that you have to report to me? And he said, The Yahudim have agreed to ask that you bring Shaul down to the council tomorrow, as intending to inquire more exactly about him. Therefore, do not let them persuade you, for more than forty of them lie in wait for him, men who have bound themselves by an oath, neither to eat nor to drink, until they have killed him. And now they are ready, waiting for the promise from you. Then the commander dismissed the young man, having commanded him, Inform no one that you reported this to me. And having called near a certain two captains, he said, Get two hundred soldiers ready to go to Caesarea, and seventy horsemen and two hundred spearmen after the third hour of the night, and provide beasts on which to place Shaul and bring him safely to Felix the governor. Having written a letter in this form, Claudius Lysias, to the most excellent governor Felix, greetings. This man, having been seized by the Yahudim and being about to be killed by them, I rescued. Having come with a body of soldiers, having learned that he was a Roman, and desiring to know the reason they accused him, I brought him before their council. I found out that he was accused concerning questions of their Torah, but there was no charge against him deserving death or chains. 
And when I was informed that there was to be a plot against the man by the Yahudim, I sent him immediately to you, having also commanded his accusers to state before you the charges against him. Be strong. So the soldiers, as they were commanded, took Shaul and brought him by night to Antipatris. And on the next day they left the horsemen to go on with them and return to the barracks, who, having come to Caesarea and delivered the letter to the governor, they also presented Shaul to him. And the governor, having read it, and having asked of what province he was, and being informed that he was from Calicia, said, I shall hear you when your accusers arrive also. And he commanded him to be kept in Herodes' palace. Chapter 24 And after five days the high priest Hananiah came down, with the elders and a certain speaker, Tertullus, and they brought charges against Shaul before the governor. And when he was called upon, Tertullus began to accuse him, saying, Having obtained great peace through you, and reforms being brought to this nation by your forethought, we accepted always and in all places, most excellent Felix, with all things. But in order not to hinder you in any further, I beg you to hear us briefly in your gentleness. For having found this man a plague, who stirs up dissension among all the Yahudim throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, who also tried to profane the set-apart place, and whom we seized and wished to judge him according to our law. But the commander Lysias came along, and with much violence took him out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come to you, and by examining him yourself you shall be able to know all these matters of which we accuse him. And the Yahudim also agreed, maintaining that these matters were so. And when the governor had motioned him to speak, Shaul answered, Knowing that for many years you have been a judge of this nation, I gladly defend myself, seeing you are able to know that it is not more than twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship, and they neither found me in the set-apart place disputing with anyone, nor stirring up the crowd, either in the congregations or in the city, nor are they able to prove the charges of which they now accuse me. And this I confess to you that according to the way, which they call a sect, so I worship the Elohim of my fathers, believing all that has been written in the Torah and in the prophets, having an expectation in Elohim, which they themselves also wait for, that there is to be a resurrection of the dead, both of the righteous and the unrighteous. And in this I exercise myself to have a clear conscience toward Elohim and men always. And after many years I came to bring kind deeds to my nation and offerings, at which time certain Yahudim from Asia found me cleansed in the set-apart place, neither with a crowd nor with disturbance, who ought to be present before you to bring charges if they have any matter against me. Or else, let these themselves say if they found any wrongdoing in me while I stood before the council. Other than for this one declaration which I cried out standing among them, concerning the resurrection of the dead, I am being judged by you today. And having heard this, having known more exactly about the way, Felix put them off, saying, when Lysias the commander comes down, I shall decide your case. And he ordered the captain to keep Shaul, and to have ease, and to not forbid any of his friends to attend to him. And after some days, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was a female Yahudi, he sent for Shaul and heard him concerning the belief in Messiah. And as he reasoned about righteousness and self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix became frightened and said, For the present go and when I find time I shall send for you. At the same time, too, he was anticipating that money would be given him by Shaul, that he might release him. Therefore he sent for him more often and conversed with him. But after two years had passed, Porcius Festus seceded Felix, and wishing to do the Yahudim a favor, Felix left Shaul bound. Chapter 25 Festus, therefore, having come to the province three days later, went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem, And the high priests and the chief men of the Yahudim informed him against Shaul, and they begged him, asking a favor against him that he would send him to Jerusalem, making a plot along the way to kill him. Then indeed Festus answered that Shaul should be kept at Caesarea, and that he himself was about to set out shortly. Therefore, he said, let those who have authority among you go down with me and accuse this man to see if there is any fault in him. And having spent more than ten days among them, he went down to Caesarea, 
And on the next day, sitting on the judgment seat, he commanded Shaul to be brought. And when he had come, the Yahudim who had come down from Jerusalem stood about, bringing many and heavy charges against Shaul, which they were unable to prove. While Shaul said in his own defense, Neither against the Torah of the Yahudim, nor against the set-apart place, nor against Caesar did I commit any sin. But Festus, wishing to do the Yahudim a favor, answering Shaul, said, Do you wish to go up to Jerusalem and be judged before me there concerning these matters? And Shaul said, I am standing at Caesar's judgment seat, where I should be judged. To the Yahudim I have done no wrong, as you know well enough. For if indeed I do wrong or have committed whatever deserving death, I do not refuse to die. But if there is none at all in these matters of which these men accuse me, no one is able to give me up to them. I appeal to Caesar. Then Festus, having talked with the council, answered, You have appealed to Caesar. To Caesar you shall go. And certain days having passed, Sovereign Agrippa and Bernicchi came to Caesarea to greet Festus. And when they had spent many days there, Festus laid Shaul's case before the sovereign, saying, There is a man here, whom Felix left as a prisoner, about whom the chief priests and the elders of the Yahudim informed me when I was in Jerusalem, asking for a judgment against him. To them I answered, It is not the Roman practice to give up any man to destruction, before the accused meets the accusers face to face, and has a chance to answer for himself concerning the charge against him. They, therefore, having come together without any delay, I sat on the judgment seat the next day and commanded the man to be brought in. When the accuser stood up, they brought no charge against him such as I expected, but had some questions against him about their own worship and about a certain Yahshua who had died, whom Shaul was claiming to be alive. And being uncertain how to investigate these matters, I asked whether he wished to go to Jerusalem and there be judged concerning these matters. But when Shaul appeared to be kept for the decision of Augustus, I ordered him to be kept until I send him to Caesar. And Agrippa said to Festus, I was wishing also to hear the man myself. And he said, Tomorrow you shall hear him. Therefore on the next day Agrippa and Bernicchi, having come with great show and having entered the place of hearing with the commanders and the eminent men of the city, Shaul was brought in at the order of Festus. And Festus said, Sovereign Agrippa and all the men present here with us, you see this one about whom all the community of the Yahudim pleaded with me, both at Jerusalem and here, shouting that he ought not to be living any longer. But I, having found that he had committed none at all deserving death, and that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I decided to send him. I have no definite matter to write to my master concerning him. Therefore I have brought him out before you, and most of all, before you, Sovereign Agrippa, so that after the examination has taken place, I might have somewhat to write, for it seems to me unreasonable to send a prisoner and not to signify the charges against him. Chapter 26 And Agrippa said to Shaul, You are allowed to speak for yourself. Then Shaul stretched out his hand and made his defense. I think myself blessed, Sovereign Agrippa because today I shall make my defense before you concerning all of which I am being accused by the Yahudim, your being most of all an expert, knowing of all practices and questions which have to do with the Yahudim. So please, hear me patiently. Truly then, all the Yahudim know my way of life from youth, which I led from the beginning among my own nation at Jerusalem, since they have known me from the first, if they wish to witness that I lived as a Pharisee according to the strictest sect of our observance. And now I stand and am judged for the expectation of the promise made by Elohim to our fathers, to which our twelve tribes, earnestly serving Elohim night and day, expect to attain. Concerning this expectation, O sovereign Agrippa, I am accused by the Yahudim. Why is it considered unbelievable among you if Elohim raises the dead? Therefore, indeed, I thought within myself that I ought to do much against the name of Yahshua of Nazareth, which also I did in Jerusalem. And I shut up many of the set-apart ones in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my vote against them. And punishing them often in all congregations, I compelled them to blaspheme. And being exceedingly enraged against them, I persecuted them even to foreign cities. While thus engaged, as I was journeying to Damasek with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday along the highway, O sovereign, 
I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and those who journeyed with me. And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew language, Shaul, Shaul, why do you perse against me? Is it hard for you to kick against the prods? And I said, Who are you, master? And he said, I am Yahshua, whom you persecute. But rise up and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you a servant and a witness both of what you saw and of those which I shall reveal to you, delivering you from the people and the nations to whom I now send you, to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, and the authority of Satan to Elohim, in order for them to receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are set apart by belief in me. Therefore, sovereign Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damasek and in Jerusalem, and in all the country of Yehuda, and to the nations, that they should repent and turn to Elohim, and do works worthy of repentance. That is why the Yahudim seized me in the set-apart place and tried to kill me, Therefore, having obtained help from Elohim, to this day I stand, witnessing both the small and great, saying none other than what the prophets in Moshe said would come, that the Messiah would suffer, would be the first to rise from the dead. He would proclaim light to the people and to the nations. And while saying this in his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Shaul, you are mad. Much learning is turning you to madness. But Shaul said, I am not mad. Most excellent Festus, but I speak words of truth and sense. For the sovereign before whom I also speak boldly knows these matters. For I am persuaded that none of these are hidden from him. For this has not been done in a corner. Sovereign Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do believe. And Agrippa said to Shaul, With a little you might persuade me to become a messianist. And Shaul said, much or little, I pray to Elohim that not only you, but also all who hear me today might become such as I also am, except for these chains. And having said this, the sovereign stood up, as well as the governor and Berniki and those sitting with them. And having withdrawn, they spoke to each other, saying, This man is doing none at all deserving death or chains. And Agrippa said to Festus, This man could have been released if he had not appealed to Caesar. Chapter 27 And when it was decided that we should sail to Italy, they delivered Shaul and some other prisoners to one named Julius, a captain of the Augustan regiment, and having embarked in a ship from Adramatim, about to sail along the coasts of Asia, did set sail. Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica, was with us, and on the next day we landed at Zidon, and Julius treated Shaul kindly and allowed him to go to his friends to receive attention. And from there we put out to sea and sailed close to Cyprus because the winds were against us. And having sailed over the sea along Kilikia and Pamphylia, we came to Mura of Lucia. And there the captain, having found an Alexandrian ship sailing to Italy, did put us on board. And having sailed slowly many days, and arriving with difficulty off Nidos, the wind not allowing us to proceed, we sailed close to Crete off Salmon. And passing it with difficulty, we came to a place called Fair Havens, near the city of Lacia. And much time having passed, and the sailing now being dangerous, because the fast was already over, Shaul advised them, saying, Men, I see that this voyage is going to end with damage and great loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also our lives. But the captain was persuaded by the pilot and the owner of the ship rather than what Shaul said. And because the harbor was unsuitable to winter in, the greater part advised to set sail from there too, if somehow they were able to reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete facing southwest and northwest to pass the winter. And a south wind blowing softly, thinking that they had obtained their purpose, having lifted anchor, they sailed along Crete close inshore. And not long after, a stormy headwind rushed down from it called Northeaster. And when the ship was caught in it and unable to head against the wind, we let her go and were driven. And having run under a small island called Clauda, we were hardly able to control the small boat. And having hoisted it, they used helps to undergird the ship. And fearing lest they should run aground on Surtis, they lowered the tackle and so were driven. And because we were exceedingly storm-tossed, the next day they began to throw overboard. 
and on the third day we threw out the ship's tackle with our own hands. When now neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and no small storm beat on us, all expectancy that we would be saved was taken away. And when there had been a long abstinence from food, then Shaul, standing in the midst of them, said, Truly, men, you should have listened to me not to have sailed from Crete and sustained this damage and loss. And now I urge you to take courage, for there shall be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For tonight a messenger of the Elohim, to whom I belong and to whom I serve, stood by me, saying, Do not be afraid, Shaul. You have to be brought before Caesar. And look, Elohim has favorably given you all those who sail with you. Therefore take courage, men, for I believe, Elohim, that it shall be according to the way it was spoken to me. However, we need to run aground on some island. And when the fourteenth night came, as we were driven up and down in the Adriatic Sea, about midnight the sailors suspected that we were drawing near some land. So, taking soundings, they found it to be twenty fathoms. And a little further on they took soundings again and found it to be fifteen fathoms. And fearing lest we should run aground on the rocks, they dropped four anchors from the stern and were praying for day to come. And when the sailors were seeking to escape from the ship, when they had let down the boat into the sea under pretense of going to cast out anchors from the prow, Shaul said to the captain and the soldiers, If these men do not remain in the ship, it is impossible for you to be saved. Then the soldiers did cut the ropes of the boat and let it fall off. And when day was about to come, Shaul urged them all to take food, saying, Today is the fourteenth day you have continued without food and eaten none at all. So I urge you to take food, for this concerns your safety, since not a hair shall fall from the head of any of you. And having said this, he took bread and gave thanks to Elohim in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. And all were encouraged and also took food themselves. And all of us were two hundred and seventy-six beings in the ship. And being satisfied with food, they were lightening the ship, throwing out the wheat into the sea. And when the day came, they did not recognize the land, but they noted a certain bay with a beach onto which they planned to run the ship if possible. And having cast off the anchors, they left them in the sea, meanwhile untying the rudder ropes. And they hoisted the foresail to the wind and made for the beach. But coming upon a place where two seas met, they grounded the ship and the prow stuck fast and remained immovable, but the stern was broken by the pounding of the surf. And the soldiers intended to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim away and escape. But the captain, intending to save Shaul, kept them from their intention, and commanded those able to swim to jump first and get to land. And the rest, some indeed on boards and some on items of the ship, and so it came to be that all reached the land in safety. Chapter 28 And having come to safety, they learned that the island was called Melit, and the foreigners showed us extraordinary kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us all, because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But Shaul, having gathered a bundle of sticks and having laid them on the fire, an adder came out because of the heat and fastened itself on his hand. And when the foreigners saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to each other, This man is certainly a murderer, whom, though saved from the sea, still right ruling does not allow to live. Then indeed he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no evil. And expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead, they waited for a long time and saw no harm come to him. Changing their minds, they said that he was a mighty one. And in the neighborhood of that place there were lands of the chief of the island, whose name was Poplius, who received us and housed us in a friendly way for three days. And it came to be that the father of Poplius lay sick with inflammation and dysentery. Shaul went into him, and having prayed, he laid his hands on him and healed him. And when this took place, the rest of those on the island who had diseases also came and were healed, who also respected us in many ways. And when we were setting sail, they provided us with our needs. And after three months, we set sail in an Alexandrian ship, which had wintered at the island, and whose figurehead was Descori. And having landed at Syracuse, we stayed three days, from which place we went around and arrived at Reguum. And after one day, the south wind blew, and the second day we came to Petoli, where we found brothers and were invited to stay with them seven days. And so we went toward Rome. And when the brothers there heard about us, they came to meet us as far as Forum of Appius and three taverns. When Shaul saw them, he thanked Elohim and took courage. And when we came to Rome, 
the captain delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Shaul was allowed to stay by himself with the soldier guarding him. And it came to be after three days that Shaul called the leaders of the Yahudim together. And when they had come together, he said to them, Men, brothers, though I have done none at all against our people or the practice of our fathers, I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, intended to let me go because there was no cause for putting me to death. But the Yahudim spoke against it, and I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, not that I had any accusation against my nation. This, therefore, is the reason I called for you, to see you and speak with you. It is because of the expectation of Israel that I am bound with this chain. And they said to him, We neither received letters from Yahuda concerning you, nor have any of the brothers who came reported or spoken whatever wicked about you. And we think it right to hear from you what you think. For indeed, concerning this sect, we know that it is spoken against everywhere. And having appointed him a day, many came to him where he was staying, to whom he was explaining, earnestly witnessing about the reign of Elohim and persuading them concerning Yahshua from both the Torah of Moshe and the prophets from morning until evening. And some indeed were persuaded by what was said, but some believed not. And disagreeing with one another, they began to leave. After Shaul had spoken one word, the set-apart spirit rightly spoke through Yeshiyahu the prophet to our father, saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing you shall hear, but by no means understand, and seeing you shall see, but by no means perceive. For the heart of this people has become thickened, and with their ears they heard heavily, and they have closed their eyes, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn back, and I should heal them. Therefore let it be known to you that the deliverance of Elohim has been sent to the nations, and they shall hear. And when he had said these words, the Yahudim went away and had a great dispute among themselves. And Shaul stayed two entire years in his own rented house, and was receiving all who came to him, proclaiming the reign of Elohim and teaching about the Master Yahshua Messiah with all boldness, unhindered. The Book of Romans, Romaim, Chapter 1 Shaul, a servant of Yahshua Messiah, a called emissary, separated to the good news of Elohim, which he promised before through his prophets in the set-apart scriptures, concerning his son who came of the seed of David according to the flesh, who was designated son of Elohim with power according to the set-apart spirit by the resurrection from the dead, Yahshua, Messiah, the Master of us, through whom we have received favor and office of the emissary for belief obedience among all the nations on behalf of His name, among whom you also are the called ones of Yahshua, Messiah, to all who are in Rome, beloved of Elohim, called set-apart ones, favor to you and peace from Elohim our Father and the Master Yahshua, Messiah. First, I truly thank my Elohim through Yeshua Messiah for you all, that your belief is spoken of in all the world. For Elohim is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the good news of his Son. How unceasingly I make mention of you, always asking in my prayers, if at all possible, I shall be blessed by the desire of Elohim to come to you. For I long to see you so as to impart some spiritual gift to you, for you to be established. And that is to be encouraged together among you, each by the other's belief, both yours and mine. And I do not wish you to be unaware, brothers, that I often purposed to come to you, but was hindered until now in order to have some fruit among you, as also among the other nations. I am a debtor, both to Greeks and to foreigners, both to wise and to foolish. That is why I am so eager to bring the good news also to you who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the good news of Messiah, for it is the power of Elohim for deliverance to everyone who believes, to the Yahudi first and also to the Greek. For in it the righteousness of Elohim is revealed from belief to belief as it has been written, but the righteous shall live by belief. For the wrath of Elohim is revealed from heaven against all wickedness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which is known of Elohim is manifest among them, for Elohim has manifested it to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible qualities have been clearly seen, 
being understood from what has been made, both His everlasting power and mightiness, for them to be without excuse. Because although they knew Elohim, they did not esteem Him as Elohim, nor gave thanks, but became vain in their reasonings, and their undiscerning heart was darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and changed the esteem of the incorruptible Elohim into the likeness of an image of corruptible man, and of birds, and of four-footed beasts, and of reptiles. Therefore Elohim gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts, to disrespect their bodies among themselves, who changed the truth of Elohim into the falsehood, and worshipped and served what was created, rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Because of this, Elohim gave them over to degrading passions, for even their women exchanged natural relations for what is against nature. And likewise the men also, having left natural relations with women, burned in their lust for one another. Men with men committing indecency and receiving back the reward which was due for their straying. Even as they did not think it worthwhile to possess the knowledge of Elohim, Elohim gave them over to a worthless mind to do what is improper, having been filled with all unrighteousness, whoring, wickedness, greed, evil, filled with envy, murder, fighting, deceit, evil habits, whisperers, slanderers, haters of Elohim, insolent, proud, boasters, divisors of evil, disobedient to parents, without discernment, covenant breakers, unloving, unforgiving, ruthless, who, though they know the righteousness of Elohim, that those who practice such deserve death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Chapter 2 Therefore, O man, you are without excuse, every one who judges. For in which you judge another, you condemn yourself, since you who judge practice the same wrongs. And we know that the judgment of Elohim is according to truth against those who practice such wrongs. And do you think, O man, you who judge those practicing such wrongs and doing the same, that you shall escape the judgment of Elohim? Or do you despise the riches of His kindness and tolerance and patience, not knowing that the kindness of Elohim leads you to repentance. But according to your hardness and your unrepentant heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Elohim, who shall render to each one according to his works everlasting life to those who by persistence in good works seek for esteem and respect and incorruptibility but wrath and displeasure to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness. Affliction and distress on every human being working what is evil, of the Yahudi first and also of the Greek. But esteem, respect, and peace to everyone working what is good, to the Yahudim first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with Elohim. For as many as sin without Torah shall also perish without Torah. And as many as sinned in the Torah shall be judged by the Torah. For not the hearers of the Torah are righteous in the sight of Elohim, but the doers of the Torah shall be declared right. For when nations who do not have the Torah by nature do what is in the Torah, although not having the Torah, they are a Torah to themselves, who show the work of the Torah written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts accusing or even excusing, in the day when Elohim shall judge the secrets of men through Yeshua Messiah, according to my good news. See, you are called a Yahudi, and rest on the Torah, and make your boast in Elohim, and know the desire of Elohim, and approve what is superior, being instructed out of the Torah, and are trusting that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, an instructor of foolish ones, a teacher of babes, having the form of knowledge and of the truth, in the Torah. You then who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who proclaim that a man should not steal, do you steal? You who say, do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abominate idols, do you rob temples? You who make your boast in the Torah, through the transgression of the Torah, do you disrespect Elohim? For the name of Elohim is blasphemed among the nations because of you, as it has been written, for circumcision indeed profits if you practice the Torah. But if you are a transgressor of the Torah, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. So if an uncircumcised one watches over the righteousness of the Torah, 
shall not his uncircumcision be reckoned as circumcision, and the uncircumcised by nature who perfects the Torah shall judge you, who notwithstanding letter and circumcision are a transgressor of the Torah. For he is not a Yahudi who is so outwardly, neither is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh, but a Yahudi is he who is so inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in spirit, not literally, whose praise is not from men, but from Elohim.